Here we're going to define work in the simplest possible case. And that is where the force is constant. So it's always pointing in the same direction. And it has the same magnitude. And we're moving in a one-dimensional space. So we're keeping it really simple right now. And so the thing that we're computing here, work, it's a way of calculating how much energy is transferred by a force. And as we start to get into energy conservation problems um, later, later on in the course, uh, it'll become more clear what this term even means. So again, work is a way of calculating how much energy is transferred during some process using a force. And so our basic definition is that the work in this case is going to be the vector of force that was applied dotted into the displacement vector. Now this dot product thing, that means that you take the magnitude of the first vector multiplied by the magnitude of the second vector multiplied by the cosine of the angle between them. And an interpretation of that is just that only the part of the force pointing in the direction of displacement actually counts. That little piece is F cosine theta which makes sense. If I'm talking about how much energy is transferred, I have a block moving to the right and I want to figure out maybe how much it speeds up because of this force. It's only that parallel piece that matters. If this thing is really constrained to this surface, then there are other forces canceling out the vertical component. And that just doesn't matter for increasing the energy of the block. All right, so there's our basic definition. And I want to look at the units of work. Again, a notation for that is to put it in brackets. And if I have force here and displacement after that, and then the cosine is unitless, I don't have to worry about that piece, then the units of work must be newtons multiplied by meters. And there is a special name for this. And it's called joules. And you may already be familiar with this. The joules are a unit of energy, which is no surprise given what we're trying to do here. We're trying to calculate how much energy is transferred. So I want to do two very simple examples. Uh, first, let's suppose that the force is 100 newtons. I don't even know what the mass is, but I'm assuming here that it's heavy enough to not come off the ground with 100 newton force. Um, I'm going to put an angle of 35 degrees in. And I'm going to put a delta x of 10 meters. In other words, we use a 100 newton force angled at 35 degrees above the horizontal to drag a block by 10 meters. And I want to know how much work is done during that process. So I'm going to go ahead and work down here. So it would be a f delta x cosine theta, where theta is the angle between the force vector and the displacement vector. And I get 100 newtons multiplied by that 10 meter displacement, cosine 35 degrees. And I'll find out how much energy was pumped into the block during this process. I get 819 joules if I just keep three sig figs. So 819 joules. Okay, and the second short example I want to imagine that there's actually a kinetic friction force going on as well. So I'm going to say FK equals maybe 20 newtons. And so that force vector would look like this. And now when I compute the work done by this force, I would have to take the dot product between FK and the displacement vector. Um, so if I write down, write it down in this form, I would have FK times delta X times the cosine of the angle between FK and delta X. Well, these two vectors point in opposite directions. 
So the cosine of that angle is negative 1, the cosine of 180 degrees. So I end up with a negative fk delta x. This makes sense physically because the friction force is acting to slow the block down compared to what it would be doing otherwise. So it's actually sucking energy out of the system. It's making it so the total energy at the end is less than it would be. And so I end up with a negative 20 newtons multiplied by 10 meters, which is a negative 200 newton meters or joules. All right, so in this example, um, this applied force at an angle pumped 819 joules of energy into the object, making it go faster. And the friction force sucked out 200 joules of energy, making it go slower than it would have gone otherwise.